My name is Janice Civeles and I'm a proud Latina role model. Please embrace your uniqueness, be gracious, and everything that you do, do it with courage. You are great and you will do great things. I'm attorney Yara Rodriguez. I am very proud to be a Latina role model. And for you, my message is never quit, keep at it, and work 24 seven for whatever dream you have, because your dream will become a reality. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put, Put the Hispanic, Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. Call now or visit HispanicAchievers.org. Hi, I'm Danny Ramos and welcome to this week's edition of Hispanic Speak Out TV, brought to you for 14 years on Bright House Cable. Uh, we are in the six counties of Central Florida, and just recently we are being launched into an 11 additional counties on the West Coast and be moving into Jacksonville within two months. So we're, right now we're going to be broadcasting in 19 counties, plus the Duval County of Jacksonville, which will make it 20. Um, and we're doing that just before the political season, which is great for us and great for whoever wants to come onto the show. Uh, we have an interesting show tonight, and I'm here with an author, a writer. His name is William Garlington, and he has written a book called It's Your Choice America. Looks something like that. Um, how are you? Good. Thank you so much. Good. I'm glad you're here. Um, you have, uh, I want to start off, you're a conservative. Yes, sir. Okay. Who, so that we can draw a parallel, who is parallel to your mindset who's running for president in the Republican Party right now? If you had to pick, there's 20 guys running. Yes. So who would be the guy that you would be the closest to? Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz, really? Right, yes. And not Rand Paul? No. Rand okay. Paul is uh, more of a, a libertarian. Okay. Nothing wrong with being that, but uh, it's not a conservative. Okay. Um, I, we have some interesting um, uh, comments you've made in the book, and I'd like to refer to the book. And sure, then, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Um, in the book you say, so don't pin a racist tag on me because King Obama is black. No, it's because this inept president hates capitalism, hates conservatives, dislikes Christians, and wants to rewrite the United States Constitution, and he has the support of liberal Democrats and liberal media. Tell me how you come to that. In other words, what is your feeling um, uh, on how you arrive to this commentary? Okay, well, real brief, my background, um, I've been a Poli I'm a poli sci major, Far State University, so I've been dealing or, or understanding politics since I was a very young boy. When I came up with this particular quote, it was based upon the Obama administration trying to circumvent conservatism through progressivism and liberalism by way of the Democratic Party. And the Democratic Party has it right. Everybody, most everybody in the Democratic Party is liberal and or progressive. It's the Republican Party that has it wrong. We've got liberals in the Republican Party, we've got moderates in the Republican Party, and we've got a few conservatives. And, well, that's, what, what, and that's the problem. Okay, with well, yes. Hillary Clinton, you have Hillary Clinton. Yes. Where would you place Hillary Clinton in relationship to Elizabeth Warren, for example? Elizabeth Warren is going to be far left than Hillary Clinton. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth Warren and Barack Obama are around the same when it comes to liberal issues, social, uh, fiscal issues when it comes to the progressive movement. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton is left, but she's a little bit more toward the middle, but she's not the middle. Okay. All right. So now, this um, President Obama hates conservatives, dislikes Christians. So how did you come to that? His, his propensity... I know, I know, I'm sorry, Oops. I didn't want to... I noticed that you have the word hate twice, hates capitalism, hates conservatives, but when it comes to the Christians, that dislikes Christians. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to say he hates. I don't really. When I wrote this book, I was a little tw ticked off. But for the most part, I don't know what's in uh, President Obama's heart. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can only see what comes from his administration and what he depicts. So when he is, or seems to me, in other conservatives as divisive as a separatism of America, w by using you know Christians as a tool of. Um, the, the wars, the, uh, the crusades, where when something happens on the Muslim side, they get, he doesn't go that far, right? It tells me that he dislikes the traditional 
America that I was brought up with and through the uh, capitalism, through conservatism, through the Constitution. So when I say he's divisive in that, he typically doesn't seem to like um, the conservatives and he wants to destroy that and that's based on facts through Rush Limbaugh, Bill O'Reilly, Glenn Beck mm -hmm. and other conservative mm -hmm. talk show hosts. Okay. The, the thing with Christianity, how do you feel about the gay situation, gays uh, equal marriage, you know, marriage now? Great, okay. As a Christian, as, uh, yeah. as a Christian, I have no problem if somebody wants to have a civil union, if they want to live together, if they want to be married in, the, in their um, one gender, okay? Uh, what I have a problem, and what most conservatives have a problem, is write, rewriting biblical law that marriage is between a man and a woman. That didn't come out of America, that came out of the Bible. So when the radical liberals want to circumvent and change it and put in the Constitution, okay, an amendment that says marriage can be between anybody, that's a slippery slope. We can still work together, we can still see uh, people as they are, but we don't have to go and put a, an amendment together when it defines marriage because that is through biblical law. Do, do you think that this movement, the gay movement, is going in a direction where Christian pastors and priests will be forced to marry gay couples? Possibly. It's, it's, it's getting to that point where they should exercise their right to not perform such things if, it, if they believe in their, of their so faith. So we're, we're on a slippery pole here because yes. on one side you're saying freedom of religion. You got freedom of religion. Yes. So obviously a priest or a pastor or a Christian can have freedom of religion and he practices his freedom of religion, which is Christianity. Right. On the other side, you're talking about the civil rights of people saying, well, you can't deny me my right to be married. That's correct. But if they want to be married in a Christian church, what do you think is going to happen with that? I believe the Christian church should, have, should exercise their right under their faith to deny them if they don't believe that two homosexuals should be married in a church. But we don't care if they want to have a civil union. We don't care if they want to be married. We, we really don't care. Conservatives so, well, don't. Are you saying that they should start up there indirectly because the solution for that would be that they start their own church? They could, but I, I, again, uh, Danny, conservatives don't care about if you're married or not married to a point because cons Christians don't judge. That is between, but we have a problem if the federal government or these uh, leftist radical liberals want to try to put this into the Constitution, and that's what they've been talking about for many years. Okay. How do you feel about, um, and I see in, and there's a chapter in your book on page 97 that starts with the abuser, the looter, the moocher. Correct. Let me have your views on that. Okay. Well, it's, it's the moocher is the, the person that believes that they're entitled to something by way of the federal government or other people, okay? So they're mooching off the, the system. As a Christian, as a conservative, I don't have a problem helping those individuals that can't provide for themselves, the elderly, the impoverished, the, 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 the people that have some disabilities. I have no problem. But when people are young or need, my age that can still work. Okay. What, what, the, what, the, you, the, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yes, but, sir. So what you're saying is the system, it's not the philosophy of people mooching, it's that the system that we have doesn't identify who they are. Because if you are for helping people who can't help themselves because of incapacitation, physical and all that, then you're talking about people who can help themselves just refuse to do it? That's correct. Okay. That's so, a moocher. So that's, that's, the system has broken down in finding and identifying those people. Because well, that's, that's where we're at well, with that. I even go even further. The system, the federal government has broken down because we've, they've gotten so powerful that these liberals, by way of a vote, if they can give to or these moochers, they're going to in turn receive their vote so that they can still be in the federal government. Okay. I mean, on the, I, I, the reason why I keep interrupting because the time clock is going okay, and sorry. I want to hit you with some, so, okay. some good yes, questions. Yes, sir. Okay, immigration. Yes. Okay, Obama has opened the floodgates. He did an executive order on immigration. Yes. Which uh, a lot of people say is against the law. Right. That he did that. Um, do you believe that the door should be opened or the door should be closed? Should we build a fence? What should we do? Absolutely. We, we should, number, on immigration, it's in my book, we should gather our, our, our arms around the problem and be 
uh, build the fence, build the borders around that area, and then start looking at those folks that have been in here, and then try to put them in the back of the line, but going through the process. We don't need to deport 12 million immigrants, but we need to stop the immigration or these people, these illegal immigrants continuing to come over the border. Do you think that that uh, was instituted because Obama wants to turn America brown? No, it's he in, wants to bring people into the Democratic Party, so he's opening up all these gates. The second one, the one that you just, in my opinion, I believe not not necessarily Brown. He's he's bringing these people in so the Democratic Party can have their vote, so they can continue having okay. the Democratic Liberal Party in okay. office. All right. Do you think um, the situation with racism, uh, the conflict between races, has increased with Obama or decreased? Increased. And why do you say that? Well, a lot of people thought it would decrease because I believe the administration, along with some of the people that are leaders like Al Sharpton, Reverend Wright, they are ginning up this racist attitude about America where I believe, on a whole, it doesn't exist. And we've seen it with the, the Ferguson, we've seen it with the New York, uh, in Chicago. Uh, they don't talk about black on black, but okay. they just talk about black on white, and I think that's ginning up the America. Do you think this police negativity uh, has been manufactured for most part? Absolutely. Okay, you believe Ma that. And it's manufactured by the leaders in the black community, like the Sharptons, the Jesse Jacksons, to get their voice, but also to turn around to get the black, vo the black vote and keep them down. I mean, Jesse, uh, Al Sharpton said a long time ago, give us a, a mule and $40 or 40 acres, okay? Well, the black population, they're still wanting their mule and 40 acres. I believe conservatism, if you create jobs, if you allow the federal government to decrease in more state rights and, and bring the economy, doesn't matter if you're purple, green, black, yellow, white, jobs need to be created because America is not as racist as the current mission administration believes it is. Well, we run out of time. I'd like to bring you back. Okay. Thank you so much, Bill. Oh, you're welcome. And the Thank book you. is Your Choice in America. It's an interesting read. Um, pick it up. Uh, how do you get this book? You can get that through Barnes and Noble okay. and through Amazon. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. And you have a website. It is is yeah. We do it. You can go through my publisher's Legacy uh, Publishing. Yes. Okay, great. It was great having you once again. Thank, thank you so much thank for you coming. Thank you so much. This is Danny Ramos. We're going to take a break right now, and we'll be back in a minute. My name is Raquel Garzon and I'm a Latina role model. My advice to you is to always be yourself, be authentic, and to do always what you believe is the right thing. Hi, my name is Jennifer Cooper and I'm a Latina role model. If you want to do what I did in my life, you want a success for your life, stay focused. Don't stop believing in yourself. Write down your goals and I will see you in the top. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. Call now or visit HispanicAchievers.org. Hi, I'm Jose Miranda, and this is Hispanic Speak Out. TV brought to you each week on channel 49 on Bright House. We've been on the air for 15 years and we bring you the latest and the best things that are going on in Florida. My guest tonight is uh, Philip Arroyo and he is an uh, up and coming attorney. Hopefully. Uh, and But he has a, a very uh, good background. You worked with the Vice President of the United States. I did. Okay, uh, you were interning for him, right? How long did you do that? I did that in the summer of 2012, and it was um, quite a humbling experience as a young Puerto Rican. And um, it's kind of funny because a friend of mine told me to to apply. Right. And I remember looking at him like he was crazy, and I said, you know, they're never going to pick me, sure, because that's you know usually Ivy League schools. And you know, I applied and I was accepted, so it was a great, great experience. And there were like a ton of Puerto Ricans working in, in the White House at the time. I was actually the only one. Oh, is that right? Um, okay. Among the interns, there are various Puerto Ricans who work on the uh, Obama administration as right. advisors in different capacities, but sure. I was the only intern that year, yeah. Right. So we were at, recently at a, uh, an event, mm -hmm. and I was um, very proud and pleased to hear you rise up to speak about what's going on in Puerto Rico. 
Thank you. Thank you. So tell me what is going on uh, uh, in Puerto Rico and why should we be concerned? So basically Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory mm -hmm. and its citizens, over 3.5 million American citizens on the island, cannot vote for the President of the United States. These are the same uh, Puerto Ricans who go to war in every U.S. war abroad and sacrifice their lives bravely in defense of democracy and freedom. Um, and yet, the 3.5 million American citizens on the island of Puerto Rico cannot vote for their commander-in-chief. Mm -hmm. This is a civil rights issue, and I believe that uh, it, the moment is, n is now to correct that um, imperfection in our democratic system. The same imperfection that our founding fathers taught us through the U.S. Constitution, when in the preamble it stated, in order to create a more perfect union. Mm. So the Founding Fathers always knew there was going to be imperfections in our system. And we've, along the way, in, along the course of our history, we've been able to correct those um, imperfections. We did it with women's uh, voting rights. We did it through the African American movement and the Civil Rights Movement in the 1960s. And I believe this is the next issue that we're going to tackle as a nation. If we as a nation or as a country take things, we don't like change, great changes quickly. We tend to go several hundred years before we make a change. Correct. So why can't Puerto Ricans just wait, I don't know, maybe another two or three hundred years and we'll, well, and we'll get it done? Well, Puerto Rico has been a U.S. territory. Uh, I, I argue that it's a U.S. colony for over 115 years. Okay. And, um, so you're trying to tell me it's time overdue? Is now. The, time is, is the time is now. You know, not one Puerto Rican soldier life should be um, spent in any U.S. Uh, war uh, until the American citizens in Puerto Rico can vote for the commander in chief. We can't be preaching about freedom and democracy in Iraq and Afghanistan, mm. sometimes unilaterally. Sure. And then we have 3.5 million American citizens that can't vote. And a lot of people in the United States don't know that, because I, I like to call it, it's America's best kept secret. Okay. Um, but it's time that the, that the secret gets out. Uh, I was able to do a documentary, it's gone viral online, um, explaining that situation. And hopefully, um, I'm confident that it's going to get done within the next years. Latinos, Puerto Ricans, have a tendency to want to jump behind great issues, yet they don't really follow through on issues. Just like we have great numbers for the voting, mm -hmm. and somehow we just can't get over there to pull those little knobs. Correct. So how are you planning to get that, uh, corral those people Motivate them off the couch. I, I say on the couch. It's very How to motiv motivate them off the couch. One of the reasons that Puerto Ricans don't go out and, and vote in the numbers that we would expect them to do here in Central Florida is because of the fact that they're still connected to the local inner politics on the island. Okay. As you know, um, the political parties on the island aren't separated by Democrats or Republicans. They're separated between parties that advocate for different political status options. Mm -hmm. And um, until that issue is resolved, well, Puerto Ricans um, will not um, go out in the numbers we expect them to. However, with this initiative, which is led by a group of students at Florida A&M College of Law, is um, we're going to draft an amendment to the U.S. Constitution, get a member of Congress to file it, and hopefully amend the Constitution like Washington, D.C. did, mm -hmm. and give the people of Puerto Rico the right to vote. That will, in turn, um, div uh, not divide, but unite the people of Puerto Rico, because the, uh, the people in Puerto Rico are divided on the issue of status, as you know. Yeah. People who support statehood, people who don't. Right. But however, Luis Muñoz Marín, who was the founding father of, Puerto, one of the founding fathers of Puerto Rico, right. and was the founding father of the status quo party, the party that opposes statehood, he's actually on record in the congressional record supporting the presidential vote. So there's support on both sides. There's consensus in terms, not necessarily for statehood, but there is consensus for the presidential vote, and I believe this can unite the people of Puerto Rico and we can get this done. Great. What's the name of your group? We're called the Coalition for the Presidential Vote in Puerto Rico. We're online. Uh, we have a website, which is www.prvotenow.us. And you have a rally that's coming up in the near future? We're, we're planning on organizing a march at the federal courthouse uh, building for the Middle District here in Orlando, downtown Orlando. And uh, it's not only going to be the presidential vote issue for Puerto Rico, it's going to be a Latino issue. Uh, we're also going to advocate for uh, immigrant rights as well. And I believe that the time is now to let um, our, our Latino community be heard by the federal government. Okay. Um, it's, you know, Are these also issues that by. you're going to take and spread across the, the United States? Because yes. I, I understand we have mm -hmm. uh, Latinos in even places like uh, uh, Indiana. And That's so true. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Which I was impressed. Now, don't get me We're wrong. We're all over the place. I was we? just impressed, yeah. yeah. 
we come from warm climates, and here they are, yep. Colorado and stuff like that. North Dakota, there's North, 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 North Dakota. So yeah. I always say, we're well, the kidnapped and brought to these places, you <laughs> know, so because we're warm, we're warm body people, you definitely, know, so definitely. So um, well, definitely, we're, we definitely plan on going national. Okay. Um, this is not only a Puerto Rican issue. This is not only a Latino issue, right. which would be the focus in terms of bringing it national, sure. but this is an American issue. Uh, this is a civil rights issue, and every American citizen deserves the right to vote for the people who govern them. And this is the, the main objective okay. behind Philip, We're going to run out of time, but I want you to come back and uh, Definitely. let's speak some more. To, uh, keep us posted about your organization. Do you have a, a number for your organization, a telephone number? You can yeah. actually call us at 407-770-9000. Seven seven zero nine thousand in our website at www.prvotenow.us. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. I really appreciate you. Appreciate you having me. For Mr. Arroyo and myself, I'm Jose Miranda, Hispanic Speak Out. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put, Put the Hispanic, Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. By getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. Call now or visit HispanicAchievers.org. Hi, my name is Lisa Pino. I'm a Latina role model. I am a student at the University of Central Florida, graduating with her communication degree in December. My advice to students is to stay focused, stay dedicated, and don't let challenges bring you down. It is not about the goal, it is about the road. Remember to keep dreaming, live genuinely, and never stop dreaming. Pursue your dreams, but enjoy the moment. Hi, welcome back, and I'm Danny Ramos, and this is Hispanic Speak Out TV, brought to you on Bright House Cable Networks in the Central Florida Six County area. Um, starting in uh, probably August 1st, we'll be broadcast in over 20 counties throughout the state of Florida. Um, that'll include the West Coast and the Jacksonville area, as well as the Central Florida area. Uh, we're here with Jen Hernandez. Jen Hernandez represents a very unique and not often spoken about or known program, which is a state program called Guardian Ad Litem. And uh, that is the, pro the state's answer to the child abuse situation in Central Florida. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me, Danny. Okay, so what area do you represent for Guardian Atlanta? Guardian Atlanta is statewide. Correct. Okay, and where? what area do you represent? Well, I am the recruiter for the program. Okay. It's a volunteer-based program, and that's what we're looking for is volunteers. Okay. What, you know, I, I'm a little familiar with the program. Do you want to talk about what the, what the program actually is? Yes. And how it works? Yes. Basically, um, when there has been alleged abuse, it could be neglect or abandonment, um, and the state has to come in and remove a child from the home. They're placed in foster homes, group homes, or sometimes a relative. So during that process, the parents have to go through court and the child is placed dependent. So they have to go through dependency court, and we get volunteers to um, visit those children in foster care and be their voice. Technically, they're their ad advocates, mm -hmm. and um, our volunteers uh, go to court, and we want to make sure that they're receiving the services. Mm -hmm. If there's um, anything that the child needs, we can help uh, mm -hmm. push that in court for them. Okay. So basically, um, as I understand it, because I'm a guardian ad litem and I've been through the system, a, uh, a person who wants to volunteer that has, how much time do they have to volunteer every month? Um, it's case by case. Uh, you know, if you get a case that has five kids, it might take a little bit longer. But uh, typically, we tell our volunteers it can take anywhere from five to ten hours. Um, but also, you, it's really how much time you want to invest. There's volunteers that have a little bit more time because they're retired, so mm -hmm. they, they want to see the child every month. Mm -hmm. I mean, every week, excuse me. They can. Mm -hmm. But all that's required is the one visit every 30 days. So they do one visit every 30 days, mm -hmm. and they go and visit either a foster care home, a relative of the child, or a group home. Correct. And then they go in, they visit the child, and what happens? Um, well, they spend some time with the child. Mm -hmm. We train you, obviously, of what okay, to look well, for. Okay, that's an important part of yes. it. Yes. Okay, well, how, do, how does a guardian ad litem, 
Uh, I, to become I, a guardian? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you gotta get, uh, you have to get certified, and we provide you with the training. At, uh, we do it at the courthouse in Kissimmee. And um, basically, when you're done with the training, you also have to uh, uh, provide a, back, we do a background check and mm -hmm. fingerprints and uh, get you certified to become a guardian ad litem. When you do those visits, you're basically looking for, um, you know, you're gonna get a tour of the house, you're gonna talk to the child, see if there's anything that um, is missing or um, that they might need help. We get a lot of uh, kids that maybe they need to see a, psychi a psychologist or they've been through some other trauma, maybe they need to see a, some type of specialist or they need a tutor in school. It could be something s as simple as that, as something more severe. Mm -hmm. And we can, um, you know, recognize that mm -hmm. and report it to the court. Okay, so when somebody wants to become a guardian ad litem, they have anywhere between uh, five to ten hours available a month. Mm -hmm. uh, how long is the training period uh, for a guardian ad litem? Um, the training period is 30 hours of training. Okay. Um, with that, there's eight hours that's independent study. So when you're interested in becoming a volunteer, you contact us. We provide you with those eight hours of training, and there's an application um, get get you an interview, and then assign you you know you uh, so, for the training session. So eight hours is on site. No, that's independent. So that's before you okay. right before you come to the training that we provide, there's eight hours that you can do. Okay, from your so home. it's eight hours plus the thirty. Combined. Combined, 30 combined. it's thirty hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you're coming to the training, you've already completed those eight hours, so you have a little bit more of a, a background to what you're going to expect. Now, okay. to be a volunteer, you don't need any experience. Um, you don't have to ba have a background in social work or anything like that. We just, we're just we really looking for caring people that acknowledge and realize the, the need for this type of um, you know, mm -hmm. caring individuals to advocate for these children that have no voice. Right now, these children are, there's, there's a, a tremendous need. How far short are you? of child advocates right now? Um, well, in Osceola County, which is where I'm from, mm -hmm. um, we have anywhere between 500 to even 800 within the year mm -hmm. that come through the system. Now, I will say this, that Osceola County is one of the only counties in the whole state that has guardian ad litem that is 100% court appointed. They have a guardian ad litem in each case, 100%, mm -hmm. which is pretty, pretty mm -hmm. amazing for mm -hmm. Uh, the amount of kids that are out there. So um, we, we still need volunteers. There's still okay. tons of kids that come in. Okay. Um, what is the telephone number that they call? Uh, the phone number is 407-742-6655. 6655. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the website, can I ask yes, yes. The website is www.galosceola.org. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to convey right now? or? Um, well, basically, if you're interested in volunteering, okay. anybody can do it. You and I are volunteers. I've been doing yeah. it for a long time. Apart from my full-time job, anybody can do it. Okay. And it's very uh, fulfilling. Yeah, I, you know, I, I did it, and, and I dedicated one Saturday a month to it, where I would get up real early, and I'd visit several kids uh, during on a Saturday. Yeah. So I really dedicated one Saturday daytime to it. And it, it, it didn't change my life. It wasn't a major... Uh, right. change in my schedule. It's time that I had available and I just put it to a great cause. Um, there are a lot of uh, children that need the support, the psychological support of a guardian ad litem. So again, if you are out there and you have a little bit of time and you want to save the life of a child, don't hesitate to call this number and ask additional questions. This is really, really a fantastic thing for you to do if you have a little bit of extra time and you want to do something positive to change the history of mankind because that's what this does. It changes the outcome of a child for the rest of their life. So please call the number if you have that time to volunteer. Jen, thank you so much thank for coming you. and um, we'll be talking. Thanks okay? for having me. This is Danny Ramos on Hispanic Speak Out and we will see you next week, same place. Are you proud to be Hispanic? Hispanics in Florida now have the first Hispanic car license plate in the United States. Be a proud Hispanic. Put the Hispanic plate on your car. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a professional dancer. 
by getting the Hispanic plate for your car, you will support scholarships and community programs. Call now or visit HispanicAchievers.org.